Acharya Shtadra Shtadra Shri Srimad Shilai Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Grantarat Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Gaur Prevanande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya right. Thank you very much. We are in Srimad Bhagavatam text, uh, what is it, Canto 9, Chapter 10, The Pastimes of Supreme Lord Ramachandra, text number 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So I just read this. Shlokas and then see how we go with translation. Gurvarte tyakta raju vyacharat anuvanam padma padbhyam priyayaha panisparshak shamabhyam mrijita patha rujoyo harindran ujabhyam vairupyach churpanakya priyaviraham rusharo pita bhu. Vijimbha Trasthabdhir Baddha Setu Khaladhava Dahanna Kosalendra Vatannaha Okay, translation of Shloka 4. To keep the promise of his father intact, Lord Ramachandra immediately gave up the position of king and, accompanied by his wife, Mother Sita, wandered from one forest to another on his lotus feet, which was so delicate that they were unable to bear even the touch of Sita's palms. The Lord was also accompanied by Hanuman, or by another monkey, Sugriva, king of the monkeys, and by his own younger brother, Lord Lakshmana, both of whom gave him relief from the fatigue of wandering in the forest. Having cut off the nose and ears of Shurpanaka, thus disfiguring her, the Lord was separated from other Sita. He therefore became angry moving his eyebrows, and then thus frightening the ocean, who then allowed the Lord to construct a bridge to cross the ocean. Subsequently, the Lord entered the kingdom of Ravana to kill him, like a fire devouring a forest. May that Supreme Lord Ramachandra give us all protection. So here is the old Ramayana summarized in the one shloka. And uh, Shukadeva Goswami said to King Parikshi that from your childhood, you are hearing Ramayana. So I'm not going to narrate all the story. Then Bhagavatam Purana becomes, you know, much bigger, much bigger, uh, ten times bigger. <laughs> and uh, he said, just in summary, give you because now we are discussing the lineage, dynasty of the kings, and in the line of the Katwanga Maharaj, we were hearing his stories. Now the Lord Ram appeared. Okay, so text five. Vishwamitra dhareyena mari cha dhyanisha charaha pasyato lakshmana syaiva hatha nairitta pungavaha. Translation In the arena of the sacrifice performed by Vishwamitra, Lord Ramachandra, the king of Ayodhya, killed many demons, rakshasas, and uncivilized men who wandered at night in the mode of darkness. May Lord Ramachandra, who killed these demons in the presence of Lakshmana, be kind enough to give us protection. So another prayer is offered. So this is very nice when somebody narrates the story of the Lord. Actually, these are prayers to be chanted by us, by the sadhakas, by the aspiring devotees of the Lord. And here you can see that he narrates the story of Ram in the form of a prayers. So this is the, the amazing... So we are in text 6 and 7. Yoloka vira samita danur aisha mugram sita swayamvara grihe trishato panitam adhaya bala gajalila ivekshu yashtim sajikritam ripa vikrishya babhanja madhye. Ji jitvan rupa gunashila vayon garupam sita vidam shiyam murasya bilam damanam margevrajan brigupater 
Yanayat Prarudham Darpam Mahim Akrita Yastri Arajabijam. So here, text six and seven. O King, the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra were wonderful, like those of a baby elephant. In the assembly where Mother Sita was to choose her husband, in the midst of the heroes of this world, he broke the bow belonging to Lord Shiva. This bow was so heavy that it was carried by 300 men, but Lord Ramachandra bent and strung it and broke it in the middle, just as a baby elephant breaks a stick of sugar cane. Thus the Lord achieved the hand of Mother Sita, who was equally as endowed with transcendental qualities of form, beauty, behavior, age, and nature. Indeed, she was the goddess of fortune who constantly rests on the chest of the Lord. We are returning from Sita's home after gaining her at the assembly of competitors. Lord Ramachandra met Parashuram. Although Parashuram was very proud, having rid the earth of the royal order 21 times, he was defeated by the Lord, who appeared to be a kshatriya of the royal order. So there's again some particular pastimes are narrated before, before marrying Sita. And this is text eight, okay. So, yeah. Yaham Satyapasham Parivita Pituhum Nidesham Strainasya Cha Api Shirasa Jagrihe Sabharyaha Rajam Shriyam Pranayanaha Pranayinaha Sukhridaha Nivasam Tyaktva Yayo Vanam Asun Iva Mukta Sangaha Yasatya Pasha Parevita Pitur Nidesham Yasatya Pasha Parevita Pitur Nidesham Strainas Yachapi Shirasa Jagrihe Sabharya Rajam Shriyam Pranayana Sukhidoni Vasam Rajam Shriyam Pranayana Sukhidoni Vasam Yaktva yayovana masun iva mukta sangha. Yaktva yayovana masun iva mukta sangha. Yasatya pasha parivita pitur nidesham. Yasatya pasha parivita pitur nidesham. Srainas yachapi shirasa jagrihe sabharya. Srainas yachapi shirasa Rajam Shiyam Pranaya Sukhrido Nivasam Rajam Shiyam Pranaya Sukhrido Nivasam Yaktva Yayovana Masun Iva Mukta Sangha Yaktva Yayovana Masun Iva Mukta Sangha Question? Yasatya Pasha Parivita Pitur Nidesham Yasatya Pasha Parivita Pitur Nidesham Sainasya cha pishira sa jagrihe sabarya Rajam Shriyam Pranayana Sukhrito Nivasam Rajam Shriyam Pranayana Sukhrito Nivasam Jakta Yaya Vanamasu Niva Mukta Sangha Jakta Yaya Vanamasu Niva Mukta Sangha Yasatya Vaja Varibi Yasatya Pasha Parivita Pitur Nidesham Yasya Cha Vishira Saja Grihe Sabharya Rajyam Shriyam Pranayana Suhrdo Nivasam Rajyam Shriyam Pranayana Suhrdo Nivasam Yaktva yayo vana mukta sangaha yaha Lord Ramachandra hu Satya Pasha Parivita Pituhu Of his father who was bound by the promise to his wife 
Nidesham, the order, Strainasya, of the father who was very much attached to his wife. Cha, also, Api, indeed, Shirasa, on his head, Jagrihe, accepted, Sabharyaha, with his wife, Rajam, the kingdom, Shriyam, opulence, Pranayinaha, relatives, Sukhridaha, friends, Nivasam, residence, Jaktva, giving up, Yayo, went, Vanam, to the forest, Asun, life, Iva, like, Mukta Sangaha, a liberated soul. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, Shri Laisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Fandara Acharya Viscom. Carrying out the order of his father, who was bound by a promise to his wife, Lord Ramachandra left behind his kingdom, opulence, friends, well wishes, residence, and everything else, just as a liberated soul gives up his life and went to the forest with Sita. Purport. Maharaj Dasharth had three wives. One of them, Kaikeyi, served him very pleasingly, and he therefore wanted to give her a benediction. Kaikeyi, however, said that she would ask for the benediction when it was necessary. At the time of the coronation of Prince Ramachandra, Kaikeyi requested her husband to enthrone her son Bharat and send Ramachandra to the forest. Maharaj Dasharth, being bound by his promise, ordered Ramachandra to go to the forest according to the dictation of his beloved. And the Lord, as an obedient son, accepted the order immediately. He left everything without hesitation, just as liberated soul or great yogi gives up his life without material attraction. So this is the shloka. Yes, satya pasha paravita pitur nidesham stainasya cha pishirasa jagriya sabharyaha Rajam Shriyam Pranayana Suhridoni Vasam Tyaktva Yayo Vanamasun Iva Mukta Sangaha. So here the translation. Carrying out the order of his father, who was bound by promise to his wife, Lord Ramachandra left behind his kingdom, opulence, friends, well wishes, residence, and everything else, just as a liberated soul gives up his life and went to the forest with Sita. So, Hare Krishna. Namo Vishnu Pada Krishna Prishta Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vikasha Swami Nitinamine Namo Vishnu Pada Krishna Prishta Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshitarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. So we are here hearing the summary of Ramayana in Srimad Bhagavatam. And indeed this Ramayana is so famous that is in every Purana mentioned. It's mentioned in Mahabharat. Summary again is given. When uh, Draupadi was attempted kidnap kidnapping by Jadrata of Draupadi. Uh, he kidnapped her for a while and then Pandavas returned from the hunt, from the forest, and they caught the Jadrata, the Sindh, king, king of Sindh province. And uh, they punished him severely. So still after that incident happened, Yudhishthir was lamenting. He was lamenting that how is it possible that such a chaste lady uh, can be touched by such a fellow, that rascal king of Sindh? And look at us, she has five husbands. Look at the mighty arms of Bhima, look at the Arjuna's Gandhiva, look at the Nakul and Sahadeva's hills, you know? And all of us cannot protect, prevent this happen. So Yudhishthira was lamenting, in spite of Shin being saved and rescued by the Pandavas, 
but still he was lamenting very much. He said, I'm the most misfortunate person in the world. But then Domya Rishi, if I remember Domya Rishi, was uh, uh, his personal Brahmin family, Brahmana. Uh, he said, oh Yudhishthira, you are not the most misfortunate person. And Yudhishthira was surprised. And who is the most misfortunate? He said, I'll tell you the story. And then he narrates Ramayana. <laughs> so that's really something extraordinary. So this uh, pastime of Lord Ram is all attractive. It's mind-blowing. It's really, really the, the extraordinary pastime. And uh, the scene, setting the scenes for the Lord to express the most amazing uh, dealings with his devotee. All Ramayana is about the exchange of feelings with Lord and his devotees. Srila Prabhupada explained, Lord doesn't need to come to kill the demons. Though we say, Lord came to kill Ravana. And Prabhupada said, yeah, but that's secondary. He comes for pleasure of his devotees. He comes for pleasure of devatas. He comes to exchange feelings with his devotees and also to rescue others to benefit conditioned souls. Prabhupada said, uh, what to kill any demon? Krishna can just order Indra or Vayu to send wind and finish off the demons. Prabhupada gave that example, you know. What is in it? You know, why he has to come to kill Hiranyakashipu? You know, he can just blink with his eye and Hiranyakashipu is gone, finish. What is the need? There is no need for the Lord to come for that. But he comes personally to rescue his devotees. So that's his quality. And Lord Ram's pastimes are so beautiful, so loving, so affectionate, so amazing exchanges are there. The Ramayana is indeed uh, more popular than Mahabharat, more popular than Gita, you may say, you know, uh, amongst the people, you may say, and uh, in tradition. You can see it's everywhere. As far as Vedic kings went around, you know, conquering and establishing Dharma, you can see even today Ramayana is played in Burma, Indonesia, when you go to Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, Taiwan, all these countries, they have Ramayana in their culture. Very prominent. Not just that they heard about it, but it's very, very prominent this pastime. In, in the, you know, whenever any drama is performed, Ram Lila is performed. In, kids are learning how to play and dance in dramas and sing. They play Ramayana. All these countries. Indonesia is Muslim country because Muslims came later in conquer and converted everybody to Mohammedanism. And uh, what they say? They say that our religion is Quran, but our culture is Ramayana. In Indonesia, people say like this. And nobody objects. It's not the king who is also now Muslim ruler. It's not that he objects also. He also attends Ramayana dramas, you know. So it's very amazing how these beautiful pastimes remain in society in spite of all the materialism and everything else. It's an amazing pastime, beautiful pastime. Everybody knows we are not going to tell all the Leela. But here, uh, the, what we learn, that when Lord Ram comes, he performs these extraordinary pastimes to attract the conditions, so to purify us for our benefit. And also he simultaneously does multitasking. He, he, uh, does the job for the devatas, he kills the asuras, reestablishes the order in the universe, places back devatas in their position which were disturbed by Ravana, that we heard from Kamba Rishi, that, that <laughs> Ravana kept all the devatas in Lanka personally to serve him. Agni was in charge for lightening the deepas for Ravana. He's the Agni, no? So you light the fire. What an insult, no? Really insult, no? Vayu, who is lord of the wind, he had to broom the courtyard for Ravana and collect the dry leaves because this is what wind does, no? <laughs> Such an insult, you know? Uh, really a big insult, you know? And then whenever he wanted, he could switch off day and night. He could tell Surya, you go, Chandra should come. And in the middle of day, night will come. That was power of Ravana. He controlled all the devatas. Can you believe that? It's amazing, Asura. Huh? So, 
The Lord came, restored the order in the universe, killed the Ravana for the pleasure of all devatas and devotees, and also um, play great expressions of love, give opportunity to service to millions of monkeys, vanaras, respectfully. And, uh, you know, even today, these leelas are so attractive, so prominent, and so much culture is based on the Ram, Ramayana, later on the, that um, Ram Charita Manas of Tulsidas, which, which uh, has few touchy points, uh, of few controversial points maybe there, but still, the more, more majority of it is had so much influence, particularly in North India, in culture of people, in the blood of people, that, that uh, it preserved the Vedic culture even today. You can say if any culture remain in India, you can say freely is due to Ramayana and Bhagavad Gita. You can freely say that, that nobody will get offended. It's true, you know, nothing else. That whatever piety people have is due to Ramayana and Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita then comes immediately after Gita, Mahabharat, because that's the part of, you know. And uh, that's, that's how it was preserved from generation to generation. Indeed, this is how it came. Now, Imam Vivaswata Yogam, Praoktavam, Aha Mavyavam, Vivaswan Manave Praha, Manur Ikshwa Akave Bravit. So, this transcendental knowledge was given through Guru Parampara, but particularly Lord Ram comes in Surya Vamsha. And this is the lineage described in Bhagavad Gita, uh, Vivaswan the presiding deity of the sun, the sun god. Vivaswan, Manave Praha. He given to Manu, Vaivaswata Manu. That's why I call him Vaivaswata Manu, because he's son of Vivaswan, Vaivaswata Manu. And Manu given to Ishwaku. And Ishwaku was king on the earth. He was the king. And he started worshipping Ram before Ram appeared. Uh, that is explained. And he built Ayodhya, King Ishwaku build Ayodhya. <laughs> and uh, Lord Ram appeared in that dynasty. So the whole dynasty of kings we are hearing now is glorified because Lord Ram appeared. Sometimes in Bhagavad you read the dynasty of Manu, the dynasty of this king and that king, and you say, okay, what do we learn from this? You learn from this that these kings are glorious because Lord appeared in their lineage. And there is Manwan Taras, when you have dynasties of Manu, or in the dynasty of any king, Surya Vamsha and uh, Chandra Vamsha. Two, two lineages of Kshatriyas come on earth. One is from, coming from Sun God, Lord Ram, Raghu Vamsha, and Chandra Vamsha, that, that uh, dynasty in which Krishna appeared. So these two Vamsas come. And Prabhupada says that uh, all Kshatriyas who were not following exactly Vedic principles were scattered from Surya Vamsha, Chandra Vamsha, they were throughout from India and now they occupy the Europe. So you say you are Indo-European stock of Kshatriyas. So you must understand when foreign devotees come a little aggressive, you know, so you must understand the background. <laughs> okay. So, the, so this is how it came in the lineage of Ishwaku and it's very interesting. Uh, Prabhupada said that Ishwaku himself already worshipped Ram before Ram appeared. How is this possible? Any scientific explanation? Because Ram appeared every Treta Yuga. So Ramayana was there in society of the, in the high society of Devatas, even from previous periods of Treta Yuga. It's eternal pastimes. It's Nitya Leela. So no wonder the Ishwaku knew about it. Lord Ram, and he knew he will appear again. Huh? So, Prabhupada said he worships Sita Ram deities. And deities are still worshipped in South India. So, some people refer to the Sita Ram Lakshman deities in Tirupati kept. That these are the deities. And uh, it's interesting, we have another information from Sri Vaishnavas. You see, uh, Ram came to, as a king. To show, what, to show how ideal king should rule. Apart from teaching devotion, he also taught the Dharma, general 
concept of dharma, varnasham system. How dharma should be established by the king. No, evam parampara praptam, imam raja arshayo viduhu, raja rishis. The saintly kings, they will implement dharma in society and see that every kinsman, that everybody under them goes home back to Godhead. That was the idea, that was ideal society. That is the duty of the king. Duty of the king is that everybody under him gets punya. Even the rogue will get benefited. How will the rogue be, get benefited? By being punished by the king. So next life he can start from zero instead of being, you know, suffering into sins, reactions of his sins. So everybody will get benefit. They will hear the holy name, they'll get prasadam, they'll have to implement the dharma. They'll be kept in order, you know, not lose. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. Not like that. No, Vedic kings were dharmic. They were implementing. So Lord Ram came and showed how the ideal king should act. And this is beauty of rhyme. This is, this is his Mariada Purushottam. This is his uh, um, bhav. That is his mood when he comes. And uh, Prabhupada narrates the story that there was a Brahmana who will come every day. He given vow. He was so attracted to Ram that he, will, he gave vow that he will not eat unless he first gets darshan of the Lord. And many devotees follow that. That first they go to the temple of the Lord, after the darshan only they will eat and then they will go to their shop, run their business like this. In Jaipur famous Govindaji temple is there, Radha Govinda. And many people follow him today, that unless they had darshan of Govindaji, they will not open their shop. They are devotees. You know? So first in morning darshan, then prasadam, then business. You know? So there was a Brahmana in Ayodhya who every day will come and see Lord Ram there. But when Ram, and then he will eat. But when Ram went for some Prabhupada, political tour, <laughs> now king has his duty, he has to inspect countries around, he has to see the borders, he has to see the forests, he has to see the fields, like that. So Ram was absent for 15 days or one month. This Brahmana won't eat, he would fast. So Lakshman informed Ram that, look, this devotee of yours, he didn't eat for one month. And Lord said, why? No, he given vow that unless he sees you, he will not eat. So then Lord Ram said, I have in my, uh, what did Prabhupada say, in, in one of the rooms, I have deity worship by Ishwaku. So you worship, give him this deity. He given, Ram given to that Brahman. You worship this deity and it's not different from me. No. So Prabhupada said, that these were the deities worshipped by Ishwaku. And uh, Sri Vaishnava claimed that this is Lord Ranganath. That this is the deity of Lord Ranganath who was worshipped by Brahma and Brahma given to Vivaswan and Vivaswan given to Manu and Manu given to Ishwaku. Deity also came in Parampara. So Sri Vaishnava claimed this is Lord Ranganath. The Prabhupada mentioned that this is the deity of Sita Ram. So could be either, could be both, uh, doesn't matter. But what it matters that Lord given form of the deity said it's not different from me. So that was implemented in society. Many, many, many people who keep Shalagram home also, they will not eat before Shalagram Puja is done, even today. Huh? And this modern culture, you wake up without taking bath, first you drink coffee and put some biscuit in mouth, put one eye is open and then TV is on already. You know, without taking bath, without brushing the teeth, nothing. It's just tamas, tamas consciousness. Huh? So nothing like that. So that that was the tradition. It's so strong, kept by Ramayana, by the examples of Ram. So this um, culture was preserved like this in the society, because the Ram plays a human-like leelas, so people can relate. Huh? He plays human-like leelas. How the king does how he obeys the father, how the son obeys the father, how, the, uh, how you treat your teacher when Vishwamitra came, how to treat the sadhu, how to treat sannyasi. And uh, ultimately, this shloka today tells this, uh, how to be renounced. Huh? It's easy to give up something which you have, when you have nothing to give up. 
poor man, what is there to give up? Already you have nothing, so I'm renouncing. But here he given up everything. He, they were emperors of the world. They were not just kings of some small city of Ayodhya. They were emperors of the planet. Those days the emperor means for all planet. As Vivaswan is presiding the deity of the sun, the king, Dasarat, was presiding the deity of the earth. Not the deity in the sense like Prithvi, like Mother Earth, but the king ruling the earth, one king, all planet, all other kings under him. Yudhishthira, same thing. Emperor, Maharaj Parikshit, emperor of the earth. So this is big thing. This is how it went. So the, when Ram came, he played this human-like pastimes. So it can be easily implemented in the society. Easy to relate. You see how he did, how he obeyed, how King Dasaratha followed the promise given to his wife. No? This is inside of the family. What to speak of giving promise to others. To wife, you tell something, and okay, you can sometimes get along with it without fulfilling the promise. No? No? Because it's a family relationship, intimate relationship. But Dasaratha, no, my word I give. If I break my word, who am the king, who am the Dharma Raj, in one sense, one who established the Dharma, then uh, all society will be ruined. Yadyad acharati shreshta stata teveta rajana seyad pramanam kurute loka stata Everybody will be misguided if I do something wrong. This is the king, this is the teacher, this is the guru, this is the sadhu. They cannot break their vows. And this is the issue that, that uh, that uh, is happening today with political leaders. You know they are plunderers. You, you, we already know even before elections start that they are going to plunder. Everywhere, all over the world. You know, the biggest thieves are politicians. I can say openly, and nobody will harm me, nobody will arrest me. Why? Because everybody knows, nothing new. It's not that I'm speaking something, oh, oh, big revelation. Everybody knows. Politician mostly, mostly means thief. Correct? So, they have a power to benefit people, but they don't benefit people. Why? Because of not understanding what is Dharma, not understanding their duty, not understanding the real goal of life, not understanding even Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha principles, not understanding the real benefit for themselves and for others. Like Ravana. Ravana wanted for himself everything. No? Artificial means of going to heaven. He wanted to build staircase to go to heaven to enjoy heavenly planets. No? So similarly, all civilization nowadays is directed in the footsteps of Ravana. All material technology, all the progress we have actually is a hedonism. I just simply oriented to sense gratification. The goal of life is enjoy the senses. That's Ravana's kingdom, not Rama Raja, not the kingdom of Ram. Kingdom of Ram means kingdom of bhakti, of devotion, ultimately ending up with moksha. Moksha, when we say moksha, moksha Vishnu Agrilabham means devotion to Vishnu. That's what we mean by moksha. But that's the goal of life. The life is devotion to Lord and stop repeated birth and death. But today's leaders are not like that. So that, that is a great need. As there is a great need of pure brahmanas to guide society, there is a great need of good kshatriyas also. And then there is a good need of good vaishyas also. And there is a need of servants also. Yeah? So the teachings of Lord Ram are preserved in society very much because of this particular quality that they were human-like and people could relate and could implement and therefore were preserved for a long, long, long time. And uh, this is what, what uh, is expected by this Krishna consciousness movement, Prabhupada said. This movement is meant to preserve this knowledge. Just like Rishis, just like Ram appear in the dynasty and the teaching is transmitted by this dynasty. Similarly, Prabhupada said that the Guru should teach disciples, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharata, 
and disciples should preserve it, teach to his disciples. So this Krishna consciousness movement got the gift in parampara of this transcendental knowledge and it's our duty to preserve it, to practice it, teach it and spread it all around. That this movement is meant for this, Srila Prabhupada said, for this very unique function to spread this transcendental knowledge everywhere and preserve it from, from the generation to generation. Prabhupada said, if we do that, if we teach our disciples as it is and they teach other, then it will last, then it will stay long and everybody will get benefited. Uh, parampara was lost when Krishna had to repair. Uh, when Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago, he had to repeat it. Evam parampara praptam imam rajas sakale neha mahata yoga nashtra Now again, is lost. Within 5,000 years, the teaching is lost. Lord Chaitanya appeared again, restarted. Teachings, pure teachings of bhakti. No? It was lost. No? Now again restarted. Now again is available and you can see the influence that millions of people all over the world are changing their life, ready to follow Ram, ready to follow Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada said that the beauty of this Krishna consciousness is that this transcendental knowledge is so practical that even though we are not now in the time when Lord performed his avatar. We are not part of Ram Lila or we are not part of Krishna Lila. At present, these pastimes are aprakata, invisible to us. Still, uh, Krishna appears in the form of his deities. And there is no difference being in presence of deity or being in presence of Lord. Then Prabhupada say, of course, Kali Kale Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. Krishna appears in the form of his holy name. So in the, when we chant Krishna's name, we are in presence of Krishna. When we chant Ram, Ram, we are in presence of Ram. We are having this association. And the proof is that we are getting purified. The pure proof of the being absolute nature of the holy name and the deity is actually that it changes our consciousness. We get purified. We become devotee of Lord, just as it would happen in the presence of the Lord. No difference. Then Prabhupada goes on. He says, not only the name and the form of the deities that you see, but we also, when we narrate pastimes of Ram and Krishna Leelas, we are also directly associating with the Lord. Directly associate. No difference also. So this is so nice. The, the narrating Krishna Leelas are all attractive. Ram Leelas are all attractive. And therefore we should more and more absorb ourselves. We should more and more read again and again Ramayana. And every time you read, it looks like a new. Although everybody knows the story, but when you hear it, it becomes like a new. Devotees were performing dramas. When Prabhupada was there, they would perform dramas. And every time when Prabhupada comes, either for Nasinga drama or Ram Leela or Krishna Leelas, like that, Prabhupada would sit and uh, uh, some of devotees, they describe that Prabhupada would sit there like a child, like first time hearing the story. You know? They were performing the Leela in the Juhu. Um, devotees were organizing and Prabhupada was there, so they performed this Leela, that Krishna has a headache. Narada Muni goes around and says that Krishna has a headache and the only cure is that if devotees give the water from washing their lotus feet and Krishna should put on his head and become cured from headache. So Prabhupada was sitting for the drama and uh, Narada Muni goes around and asks some yogis and some rishis and some, you know, different, different people, jnanis, like that. And all they refuse. No, no, how can I give water from my feet, you know, to Krishna, I'll go to hell. And every time they refuse, Prabhupada will make a face like, he was so disappointed. <laughs> They're not giving. <laughs> you know? And then he said, well, but when the gopis came and they said that, uh, yes, immediately take. But Narada said, but you will go to hell if you... That doesn't matter. The matter that Krishna had actually stopped. Prabhupada's eye, big lies and using bliss, big smile, completely into it. You know? So you can see these are not, these are, these are eternal pastimes. These are not material. This is not that. Prabhupada only told us the story. Why he surprised him? Oh, Gopis are oh, very nice. But he only told the story. How do we know about it? No? 
Who knows better that story than Prabhupada? Nobody does. But it's not boring. I already 300 times hear the story. Okay, when well, it's finished. No, it's a Navayovanam. As Lord is Navayovanam, his pastimes are also always, 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 always new and fresh. This is the quality of spirit. Nitya Lila, oh, so it's boring for Krishna. Every time same Ramayana, every time same curse, every time same curse, but it's never same. The mindset is always relishing it anew, fresh. It's never boring, it's never, never, never said, never um, repeated, you know, kind of repetition and all these things, never boring. Now I own, always fresh. So Prabhupada said that we should take advantage. We should take advantage to absorb ourselves in learning about Ram, such a, the supreme personality of God. Now we should be experts, we should know everything. We should know the details. We should know so much of the story that our mind is filled with it. Ram Leela, Krishna Leela, we should fully absorb in that. That's advantage and we are personally associating with God like this. Now that we met a person who is writing biography of one politician who died, okay, he's writing his biography. And it's amazing amount of information he knows about this person. He knows what he was wearing, when he will wake up, what type of tea he would like to take. You know, kind of, you know, it's, you know, Amazing details he knows about useless person. Neither he gets benefit, neither that person gets benefit. No? Now you have people who are experts in Prince, Princess Diana's biography, life, you know, history. You know, they're experts. They write book and the colleges invite them for speeches and their authorities on Princess Diana's life. <laughs> His authority on Princess Diana's life, that's a... Um, the devatas, huh? karmana daivanetrena, that is authority on Princess Diana's life, like in all, all our lives. That's the authority, you know, who is authority. Devatas are authority, I'm not mention which by name, but that's what it is, you know. What is the use? Expert in Princess Diana. Maybe she was nice person, but what means nice material person? Nice material person means not devotee of Krishna. I mean asura, not sura. Unless you are devotee, Prabhupada says you are asura. What is the use? So, so much energy, they know about this, film stars, so much. Rajnikanth has millions of fans following him. They know every single thing about his life, what he likes, what he, does, what he likes to eat, what he doesn't like to eat, no? <laughs> What use is of that? For him or for you? Nobody gets benefit of it, no? But here you have Ram, you have Krishna, you have this beautiful Ramayana that we should, we should absorb, we should take advantage. It's mercy, mercy personified. This, the books of Prabhupada are mercy of the Lord, mercy of Krishna. If we absorb, if we read, if we hear, we have to be attracted, even stone will melt. There is no question that one does not become attracted after repeated hearing and absorbing oneself in these pastimes. So these are most beautiful, most attractive. Ram Lila, it's a very, very uh, sad, but very sweet at the same time and uh, very pleasing to hear. So here the Shukadev could not resist, but he has to mention it. You know, he just didn't say, it. you can see other kings. There was a king, Katwanga Maharaj, and this Maharaj, that Maharaj. He could say, then there was a Dasarat and there was a Ram, Ramchandra Maharaj, and continue. But he did not do that. No? He mentioned and he kind of apologized. That, not that I don't want to speak. I want to speak, but you already know the story and let me focus on Bhagavatam. <laughs> you know? But he had to mention Ram Lila, especially, specifically. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Sri Ramachandra Bhagavan Ki Jai Gaur Premananda. Any questions, comments, realizations? Yes. Uh, this, uh, the quality of renunciation. Yeah. What is uh, what? The quality of renunciation of the Lord. What is uh, what is attractive about it? What is attractive in renunciation? 
the attractive in, in the renunciation is the uh, nobility of personality. It's how you uh, understand that renunciation is attractive? By understanding that attachment is ugly. It's so ugly when you see somebody attached. Somebody just mind bewildered and attached and, and he's ready to kill, he's ready to cheat, he's ready to do anything to keep property or something. You know, keep in charge in politics and lies and all kinds of, you know, things are happening. But you see when somebody is renounced, it's beautiful for the higher cause, renunciation, voluntarily giving up something to achieve something higher or simply to benefit others. So renunciation is beautiful. It's a, it's a, and he is showing us, you know, Prabhupada said that Lord is most renounced. We are attracted to so many wonders of material world, so many beauties, beautiful places, beautiful things like gold, jewelry, beautiful women, women, beautiful um, whatever, positions, clothes, objects, whatever. But Lord, He created all this material world, but He is not attracted by it. He doesn't come to material world, He remains in spiritual world. <laughs> so the beauty of renunciation is that, that really one is not selfish, one is not greedy, one is not lusty. This is called renunciation. And one gives up being enjoyer of material world, which is ugly. And one becomes servant of the Lord, which is beautiful. Because that everything which is tinged with selfishness is ugly and polluted. And it's, yeah, we were discussing something with Guru Maharaj and uh, some neophyte disciple is attached to his plan, to his view of the world, you know, and creates so much problem. In politics and misunderstandings and disturbance to other devotees, everything. And we had serious meeting discussing, you know, what to do, so much politics, and he's doing this, and he's doing that, and this one told this, and this one told that. And Maharaj in one moment started laughing. And we are, you know, serious topic. It's a very serious thing, you know. And Maharaj started laughing. I said, Maharaj, why are you laughing? Life would be so simple if they say, you are a guru, whatever you say, I will do. And bus, over, no meetings, no discussion, no politics, no. But due to attachment, due to selfish motivation, all the hell broke loose. So it's ugly to see. It's ugly to see how somebody is writing ugly letter to guru or somebody is mistreating his parents or somebody is mistreating his brothers, or somebody is mistreating and misusing, abusing other living entities. So these are all ugly. So beauty is in renunciation that, that one knows who is the Lord of all, who is Ishwar, and that everything belongs to him, and everything should be used in his service. And that's beautiful, you can see. Okay, I'm giving it up. So that's beautiful to behold. It's opulence, definitely opulence. Renunciation is a very rare quality in this material world. I think this is the last one that one can develop. <laughs> no? This is the most difficult one. No? Even if you have big, big uh, sannyasi or guru, you may claim, this is my zone, this is my disciple, you know, you may get this type of attachment. But the renunciation, that's the Ornament of sannyasi, that's really what it is beautiful. And they are attractive, saintly persons are attractive. Prabhupada was so attractive. Attractive not in the sense of he had a beautiful face or something, this, that. But he had a beautiful face, beautiful appearance, beautiful effulgence effusion because he was saint. In different way, this is Krishna's beauty. This is different category of the beauty altogether, you know. Not that he was wearing makeup and earrings or something, so he was beautiful. But beauty was purity. Saintliness was beauty, and that is attractive. Krishna is attractive in the heart. So the saintly person emanates beauty of Krishna by displaying renunciation. Sanyasi particularly, the display of renunciation. So you can see how everyone is attracted to the saintly person. Automatically, naturally. So... 
here Lord is showing himself as a king. For Dharma, I'm ready to give up the kingdom. Not going to fight, no? What he would do? Lakshman say, why you want to give up? It's just politics by mother. She is attached to her son and he is not qualified, you are qualified. From Dharma point of view, I'll just cut her head off and finish. You are the king. You don't go anywhere in the forest. That's also Dharma. Who will blame Lakshman if they did like that? Who will blame? No? Who would blame? It was full just. Bharat came. What did you do? I'll cut your head off now. He was his mother. You're not mother. You threw the ram in the forest. You're not my mother. Given up motherhood. He given up her. Till the rest of life. He, Ram forgiven. I don't think Bharat came again close to mother. Like uh, Ram never considered. No, that's your desire. Very good. I have no problem. But Bharat didn't take it like that. Even after Ram returned, Bharat was not freely mingling with Kaike. Only when Ram insisted, he had to be there. Otherwise, was, you know, so, so, who could stop Ram? He had the power. He could speak to Bharat. Look, Bharat, look what Mother says. He said, no way, I'm not going to accept. You are the king. They could have a deal, peaceful solution. And ignore Mother. And she's speaking something, a dharmic will ignore, finish. They could do that, but they didn't. Ram shows. Okay. And somebody objected. No, it is your dharma to be the king. And Ram said, my dharma is in the forest. My dharma is to follow what father says. And he said, go to forest. My dharma is in the forest. My staying in Ayodhya is a dharma. You see that? And this is Ram. This is what is beautiful. This is, he shows supreme renunciation. And after bringing Sita, he said, okay, now you are free. You are free from Ravana. You choose your own husband, if you will. Heavy, huh? That's amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to talk about it. So that's... And liberated soul gives up everything. His life gives up. Happily. That's the point is, happily gives up. Liberated soul gives up his life, I think Prabhupada writes. Gives up his life without material attraction. No? <clears throat> without hesitation. Then we have... Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jaya. Hare Krishna.